when a New York homeowner opened the 55-gallon drum that sat in a crawl space in his garage for more than nine years, he was stunned by what he found. Among a few personal effects, an overwhelming stench and mysterious green liquid were the mummified remains of an entire human body. Police wanted to know who it was and how they got there. This is the story of the woman in the barrel. The 2nd of September 1999 was moving day for Ronald Cohn. He had lived in his Jericho home in New York for the past nine years. Occupying a crawl space below the house was a 55 gallon drum that had sat there since before he had moved in. Today, however, he placed it on the roadside to be taken away with the garbage. When the city sanitation workers left a note to say the drum was too heavy and refused to take it, he decided he would attempt to pry it open to remove some weight. After cutting the seal open and removing the lid, he was hit by an overwhelming stench along with the mummified remains of a human body. Shocked at his discovery, he replaced the lid and called the authorities. The barrel and its contents were removed and transported to a local medical examiner's office where investigators immediately got to work to identify the body. The first task for investigators was to remove the victim and everything else inside the barrel. After delicately removing the body, they uncovered several items of jewellery, a plastic flower and a badly damaged notebook. The body was also covered in a strange green liquid. After at least nine years in the barrel, the pages from the notebook had been reduced to pulp and, at least for now, were entirely unreadable. The notebook was sent to a forensic examiner and subjected to infrared light in the hope of discerning text no longer visible to the naked eye. This was delicate work that couldn't be rushed. In the meantime, the victim was subjected to a medical examination which determined they were female, possibly late 20s, and likely of Hispanic descent. The cause of death had been blunt force trauma. As part of the examination, the body underwent an X-ray, which, to the astonishment of detectives, revealed she was around nine months pregnant at the time of death. Could this have been the motive? The autopsy had uncovered much about the victim, but not the most important thing. Who was she? Detectives turned their attention to the barrel itself, hoping it might yield some clues to help crack the case. The branding on the base of the drum led investigators to a New Jersey-based chemical company that identified the liquid in the barrel as a halogen green dye. A halogen green dye used to make plastic, trees and plants. However, they'd stopped producing the dye in 1971. Investigators now knew the purpose of the green liquid and that the crime likely occurred no later than 1971, but they still didn't know the victim or who committed the crime. Police decided to turn their attention back to the house. A search for a city record database showed that the crawl space where the drum was first found had not been built until 1984 and the person who had built it had lived at the house since 1971 investigators were very much keen to talk to him. However, during a police interview, he stated that although he did file the building permit for the crawl space in 1984 before selling the property, both the crawl space and the barrel had actually been there since before he had moved in. Investigators had just one more question for him. What did he know about the owner before him? He had bought the property off a man called Howard Elkins. He also said Elkins was a part owner in Melrose Plastics, a business specialising in artificial trees and plants. This was a eureka moment for investigators and the pieces of the puzzle were starting to come together. 
investigators were about to get some more good news. Some of the pages in the notebook had dried, and with special infrared light, it was now possible to discern some of the writing. Written at the top of the notebook was a name, Raina Angelica Marikine. A search for official records showed she had immigrated to New York from El Salvador in the 1960s. More interesting to police, though, was that no one had heard from her since 1969. However, the notebook wasn't finished giving up its secrets. Barely visible under the infrared light was a list of New York phone numbers. After more than 30 years having passed, detectives doubted the numbers would still be in use. However, to the delight of investigators, one of the numbers led to a woman named Kathy Andrade, still living at the same address, with the exact same phone number 30 years later. Andrade had been a close friend of Marikine's in the 1960s, and when contacted by police, she told them Marikine had been working at a plastics company that made artificial trees and plants. She also told police that Raina was having an extramarital affair with one of the owners. When she stopped hearing from her, Andrade had assumed she'd gone back to El Salvador. Investigators were now sure that Howard Elkins was responsible for the 1969 murder. Detectives believed that, most likely to keep the news of his affair from his wife, he murdered Marikine before placing her pregnant body into a 55-gallon drum that still contained the green dye used at his plastics factory. There the drum sat in a crawl space of his former Jericho home for 30 long years as the house changed hands several times until the drum was eventually opened in 1999. However, the road from finding a lead suspect to obtaining a conviction is not always certain. Investigators needed something more concrete, and for that, they had a plan. Investigators learned that after leaving New York in 1972, Alkins and his wife moved to Boca Raton in Florida. Detectives decided they would fly there and pay him a visit. During a police interview, Alkins denied any role in the murder of Raina Marikine. He also denied having ever seen the barrel that was found at his former home. Investigators convinced of his guilt, asked if he would provide a DNA sample, to which Elkins refused and asked them to leave. However, before detectives left, they informed Elkins that they would be back the next day with a warrant for DNA to match with the dead baby found in the victim. He nodded and again asked them to leave. This would be the last time detectives spoke with Howard Elkins. He was found dead the next day with a self-inflicted gun wound. His deep dark secret, after 30 years, had finally got the best of him. In the days that followed, blood was taken from Mr Elkins' body and sent to a DNA analyst for testing. Results showed that Howard B Elkins was, indeed the father of the unborn child, found inside the victim. Journalist and filmmaker Oscar Corral travelled to El Salvador where Marikin's 95-year-old mother broke down in tears learning of her daughter's fate after having not heard from her in over 30 years. Reina was taken back to El Salvador. Her mother died a month later and side by side, they were both put to rest. <laughs>